Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm Aisha Fayas. I'm an equity research analyst at K-Trade Securities. I welcome you all to the corporate briefing session of Image Pakistan. We're delighted to have the chief executive officer of the company, Mr. Asad Ahmed, and Ms. Uzma Ahmed, who is the executive director of the company. Before we kick off the session, I would like to thank the management of the company for taking out time and conducting this session. Uh, right now, we have uh, more than 30 participants who have joined us virtually, and uh, we will begin the session with a short presentation by our speakers, Mr. CEO and Ms. Uzma. And uh, after the presentation, uh, there will be a, a question and answer session. So the format of question and answer session is such that that will first begin with the questions uh, from the participants who are present at the image office. And then we will take the questions from the virtual participants. Um, I would request all the virtual participants to please write their questions in the chat box and I will read out those questions to the management. Um, with this, uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. Asad Saab and Ms. Uzma to please begin the presentation. Thank you very much, Aisha, for the intro. And uh, first of all, I would like to welcome all the participants here, as well as I would like to thank K-Trade for uh, providing us this opportunity of using your platform to host this uh, uh, corporate briefing session. To begin with, the company's performance and the uh, briefing, corporate briefing, which I would like to state that Alhamdulillah, we have been uh, very lucky. I would say we were very fortunate that not only did we achieve the targets which we set for ourselves a couple of years earlier, and we also shared them during our last corporate briefing session, we surpassed those targets uh, mainly because of the excellence which our designing team uh, has achieved for a number of years and they are continuously uh, beating themselves every year rather than the competition. Okay, because with the, with the designs of the previous years are a challenge to them and getting out more designs and better designs year after year has not been an easy task for the designing studio chef. So I must appreciate them in the foremost and at the same time the operations team has carried out those designs in a very, very uh, professional manner, cost-effective manner, uh, giving them at the right time, meeting the requirements of the season, after season, year round, and hence we were able to achieve a sizable growth of about 71% over the last year. And at the same time, the profitability ratios also grew. We met all our financial commitments during the year and alhamdulillah, the debt level is now almost next to zero. So there is no external debt on the company, except that there are there is some director's loan, which we have given to the company as and when it is required. And on top of it, we also share uh, the benefit of not having any such loan mm -hmm. at a higher or a commercial rate, so the financial charges are really not there. And we can uh, uh, thank God on this, that the decision which we took of announcing right shares uh, in 2021 uh, proved to be a very prudent decision. Despite uh, there were reservations of some of the analysts and the market players that instead of going for the right shares, we should have opted for the, for the long-term financing which, which were available from uh, various sources, but even then, if you have the recorded sessions of those uh, corporate briefings, I specifically and categorically said that the foreign exchange position is precarious. And at the same time, 
the interest rates which were artificially kept much lower in 2020 and 21. That is, they were far below than the real rate of inflation which was hitting the economy all the time. And hence, the drastic increase in interest rates were announced in the first and second quarter of calendar year 2022, leading us uh, uh, to, to be in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a much safer position because Alhamdulillah, there is no debt on the bank. So this was the operation side I've explained. I have also explained the, the financial side of the company. And since we have prepared a corporate presentation for this session, so uh, I would like to share that with you. And Aisha, if you could possibly uh, start rolling on uh, with, the, with, the, with the presentation. And if you could start with the, with the, with the first with the first page that is about our vision and mission. That's right. So, as you can see, uh, the vision is very clear. And it stays to be a role model fashion retail company benefiting all stakeholders and fulfilling corporate social responsibility. The same goes for the, for the mission. Then we move on to the company overview, where we have highlighted the company's journey uh, beginning 1990 and till 2022. And the salient uh, features of 2022, if you allow me, I can read that out. That is the receipt that you are the recipient of Prime Minister's Excellence Award for e commerce 2022. We opened four new retail outlets in Islamabad, Rawalpindi, Lahore, and Peshawar. And at present, we are operating with 11 retail outlets plus e commerce. We also incorporated two overseas wholly owned subsidiaries, namely Image International Limited and Image and TriStar Image USA Incorporated. And that is mainly for scaling uh, e commerce business through FBA model at Amazon. And lately in November 2022, uh, on the 8th of November, uh, Image Pakistan was awarded 5A2 business rating uh, by Dun and Brad. So this is uh, the, the uh, brief the major uh, happenings which took place during the year 2020. Then at the same time, we also uh, got career compliance recognition by SECP, and that was done, I believe, in September. So now we are 100% uh, career compliant company and also recognized by SECP, and hence we qualify for uh, investments by mutual funds who are strictly career compliant, and for those investors who are only investing in career compliant. So that gives us a, a better and a larger uh, shareholder base at present and even in future. Then we have mentioned about the company outlets, uh, which we are operating. Uh, we are Alhamdulillah now operating two outlets in Peshawar, one in Pindi, three outlets in Lahore, uh, four outlets in Karachi. So that makes uh, 11 uh, stores, brick and mortar stores, which we are operating at present. And on top of it, we have recently concluded, uh, finalized uh, a store at Dolmen Mall uh, in Lahore, which they plan to uh, give possession in, in January 2023. And the target date of operation of uh, mall is uh, July 2023. So that would be another store that we have committed because we are now very uh, cautious of entailing the, the expenditure for opening and maintaining and sustaining brick and mortar stores because that requires a lot of capital and with the, with, the, with the economic cycle in which the world and especially our economy is in, uh, we, we, we as a company have some reservations on that and we want to play safe as has been the policy of the company since inception. That we do not want to unnecessarily go aggressive and land ourselves in a position where, where it becomes very difficult to survive. And we have, we have recently seen a few of the of the competitors in the industry who are now 
uh, at one point in time were leading leading the segment and they were the leading brand in retail fashion industry and now they are struggling for the survival so so we we have learned from our own mistakes and from our own lessons for a number of years and at the same time we always continue to learn from the the happenings and the mistakes or, or the or the possibilities uh, which the other companies uh, have uh, suffered while carrying out uh, such an ambitious plan so conservatively the only outlet which we have finalized at this point in time is uh, dolmen mall dha lahore but having said this that does not mean that we are not exploring any further uh, uh, brick and mortar stores we the, the, the cities which which are on our list and we are always contemplating on finding a right location right size and the, and the right uh, uh, mall or the locality in which we should be present and those cities on top of it are jalpur Kolkata and Faisalabad. Our priority is going into these three cities, uh, but step by step, and and the portions which I have already stated. Now moving on to the product mix, we have uh, introduced uh, many categories, which is lawn kari, print kari, and we also introduced fabric by Nita. Then we have our signature print, then toilets, and many more. are in the pipeline and hitting stores every effort and this is a very very seasonal and a cyclical business so we have to cater to the demands of our customers uh, based on the season which we are approaching and the planning is done 6 months minimum in advance and at times the planning is done between 9 and 12 months in advance so so we are we are we, we are very much conscious of this uh, by street fashion business demand which is of timely induction of the categories uh, the at, at the right price and with the right mix and only then we are able to achieve the desired sales and hence the profitability to follow the next slide is regarding the board structure and compliance so that's very uh, simple and clear the the, the, the committee attendance is greater than 90% the board attendance is almost such as about 90% the women directors uh, it's a fashion business so they are they are at the moment they are in the 43% and as i was saying uh, uh, in a low volume that it's an era for women so i mean so their representation in itself reflects that we are 43 percent they are three out of seven on the board and we have the two independent directors as required by the board of corporate governance so that makes 29 percent then another slide we have is for the awards and certificates the prime minister's excellence award which i have already mentioned earlier and the other one too is about the uh, credit rating certificate issued by the ad so now moving on to the uh, sustainability initiatives which the company has undertaken uh, during the last uh, let's say financial year or so or maybe after the financial year as well during this calendar year it was a karachi down syndrome program we participated in the squash tournaments we we achieved the uh, uh, sustainable un sustainability goals of going uh, going green and at the same time then we have you done energy conservation uh, by getting a recognition from nika and, and acknowledging that we have really economized on the energy consumption at the plant and the industry overview gives us the competitive advantage we have highlighted is high gross margins in comparison to competitors uh, we have been able to achieve uh, higher gross margin averaging at 43% in financial year 2022 due to its sales mix having higher margin giving exclusive designs and premium quality at an affordable price so alongarilla this i have also highlighted in the, in the first uh, uh, sentence that the designing team deserves uh, appreciation as they have been 
the backbone of the company because design sells. And secondly, then there comes after the efficiency and the pricing factor. So I would like to compliment once again our, our design studio for, uh, for, for making us, making the product in a manner that is in high demand. demand. Then I said we have given the next slide is regarding short analysis. So there's not much to say in that, except that we, we have been uh, extremely lucky that we have a lot of strengths. The opportunities are great, which awaits us to, 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 to capture. And we have a limited weaknesses, which we have highlighted is that the physical presence in the market uh, of only 11 brick and mortar stores. So that's maybe you can say a weakness on one hand, but at the other hand, I have highlighted that we do not want to go very aggressive and then cut a figure where, where we, we, we would be in a, not in a position to sustain ourselves. And we do not like to unnecessarily open outlets and then shut them down. I would also like to uh, interject here and say that. With, yes, where we do have 11 uh, retail outlets in uh, Pakistan, but what we have done is that we have efficiently maximized uh, the square fit in terms of square feet. So our store optimization in terms of floor plans and layout uh, and visual merchandising is such that in a, short, in a smaller space, we are able to display and sell a larger, a uh, higher volume uh, as opposed to uh, other competitors in the market. And the other thing that we basically have devised, which is that our e-commerce is very aggressive. And we have penetrated in all those cities in Pakistan where our stores are not present. So uh, that I think is not a, it works to a strength actually, because without paying any uh, flat fixed rent and overhead, you are, we are already serving the customers in those cities in Pakistan through our e-commerce. Essentially, our e-commerce has covered all of Pakistan, whereas our brick and mortar stores are only limited to being in 11 uh, cities. The other uh, point I would also like to bring up is that uh, our sales uh, strategy and uh, incentive structure is extremely uh, competitive. And I would say that we are incentivizing our sales staff in such a way that in a smaller space, they are able to give customer service and turn around faster number of customers in a short span of time, which then allows us to cater to a larger volume uh, in, a, in, in, in each store. So if, uh, and I'd make this simpler for you, so if another brand has four stores in one city, we would are able to cover the same number of customers in two stores with an efficient sales uh, scheme, uh, incentive scheme for our sales staff and also our VM team, which is uh, very strong, that is on ground. I would like to add one, one simple word, is the shopping experience that Image is offering is, is of very high quality. Is of, it is premium quality, is of international standards, and, and we, we feel proud in, in saying that we value our customers the most, and we give them the best of best service, and there is hassle-free exchange policy, hassle-free return policy, the, the customer's confidence is epic, and, and, and even 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 our sales staff is complimented by our customers. Alhamdulillah, and and we, we hope that our sales team continues to provide top best service to our customers. Definitely. Now, regarding the business model, that's a prototype situation. I mean, you will say, but uh, the value addition which we do. Uh, is the highlight of the business model which we are following. Because let's say if, if, if we, we, are, we, we have to sell uh, a simple uh, a, a printed uh, cotton shirt, I mean, there are empty brands available in the market. They are cutting cost. They are, they are cutting over the quality of the fabric. We are selling cheap. But when it comes to image, we really, really try not to enter the segment where there is a throat cut cost competition. We would rather invest in some value in doing value addition, charging a premium because Alhamdulillah over a 
period of time, we have developed a very strong brand equity. And that equity leads us to produce a better quality design by using a better quality fabric, long lasting fabric, durable fabric, best of the best designs, and slightly at a premium, but an affordable price. And hence, the people who value the design and the quality of the fabric and are not just lured by the lowering of prices, they continue to buy it. And Alhamdulillah, even during the time where the companies have lost their sales volume by 25 to 30% in general overall industry has lost, we have gained about 71% growth from 2020 to 2021. So that is that is the business model which we have been following and we tend to continue to follow the same model providing premium quality product to the customer at an affordable. But there are challenges I must highlight that since they were not mentioned in the weaknesses, but I would like to highlight that since the rampant devaluation of PKR vis-a-vis -vis dollar, the prices of the commodities going up, the cotton is the main commodity which is used in the industry. The prices doubled. Similarly, the yarn prices, all the input costs went up sharply. So the challenge now is to pass on those prices in the form of price increase. But the limitation is we just cannot pass on the exact price increase which we should be doing. So we, but we are gradually passing on the prices to keep up with the profitability of the company. But, but, but that's a challenge. I mean, but that's, that's a challenge. Which, which we are facing at the moment. But I hope that if the uh, rupee dollar parity stabilizes, we are able to sustain the situation and uh, able to carry on uh, with slight premium from the market and continue to give them the best of the uh, quality in terms of designing as well as fabric. So now again, Aisha moving on, to the resilience in unprecedented circumstances. I think I have, I have already mentioned most of the things. It's a 71% exponential revenue growth. Then that's the next slide, Aisha. And then in cooperation of uh, three wholly owned subsidiaries, I've already mentioned, we generated over 3 million unique visitors to our website. And then we introduced new product categories, which I've also mentioned. So I've already almost covered this. Uh, resilience part earlier. Now, the next slide is regarding the financial strength. It's, uh, we have a strong balance sheet along the Linda with a zero debt, a strong asset base of more than rupees 2.5 billion. Property, plant, and equipment is worth more than rupees 800 billion. Then strong liquidity, sufficient liquidity available to manage working capital and future expansion requirements and then financial covenants relating to borrowing facilities maintained diligently by companies. Though we, 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 have not, uh, we have not borrowed at this point in time, we do not intend to borrow, but yet uh, whatever arrangements we, we, we have made, uh, we, we maintain uh, very, uh, we, we maintain our, our, our covenants covered very diligently. Then the, the federal trading I've already mentioned, excellent cash generation, uh, EBITDA of uh, rupees 280 million, so that makes the company uh, perform and meet its financial obligations well in time, and hence we enjoy a good uh, standing, uh, good trade standing in the market. The, the next slide is the financial performance for the financial year 21-22, and uh, as you can see, we, we achieved 1.718 billion. And the target expected target for the uh, financial year. 22, 23 is around 3 billion. So if, if we are able to hit that, that would be uh, another 70% increase or so. So we, we hope that we are able to do that, but conservatively speaking, if, or, and, uh, if I must say, if we are able to achieve, let's say around uh, 2.75 billion, 
uh, I would pet the shell sheet for doing that. But the target remains at three billion. So the, the exponential growth, which you can see from the chart, is very much visible. And uh, with Allah's support, inshallah, we'll achieve around three billion for the, for the ensuing year, which will end on the 30th of June uh, 2023. And the revenue and the cost mix, that's historic of the financial year 21-22. So I don't need to elaborate on that. It says about the sales revenue, the cost of sales. That's the next slide, I should. And then we have the operating expenses, the operating profit. The next slide is regarding the debt, the financial performance and the debt profile. And you can see that the debt equity ratio, uh, the, the equity portion is rising. and uh, the debt portion which you are seeing here is of the trade creditors and the accrued expenses, which are uh, continuing a regular part of the business. There comes the financial performance, it's a debt profile. The next uh, chart is debt profile, which reflects that the debt is almost at zero level. Then we have given the uh, six years performance, financial performance that is also printed in, in the annual accounts. Then the financial performance at a glance is the next uh, slide. And then we have actual 22 and projected cash flow. So that gives us, uh, 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 covers the brief of the financial performance which the company has achieved over the number of years. And in the last slide, we have uh, again mentioned some key events which took place, which I've already highlighted the most uh, important uh, thing among the events which, which which the company carried out was the installation of the state of the art shifting machines and enhancing the capacity of multi head employees. Because if you recall the last briefing, we categorically stated that the purpose of issuing ride shares is to reduce our dependence on the third party vendors because outsourcing. Uh, but we do not really want to do it. There are a few reasons for that. One, it sacrifices on the quality. The timings, the delivery timings, are we, we, we get very skeptical and we are very edgy when we have to hit the season and the supplies from the vendors are delayed. And thirdly, there is a saving, is a substantial saving if we do the multi-head embroidery announcement. So even now, we are under uh, negotiation with the machinery suppliers for even doubling the existing capacity which we have acquired during the last year. The quality control measures are not well when we are working with vendors. So in a nutshell, we would really like to have the 100% uh, embroidery, multi head embroidery done within house so that there are no quality issues, no timing issues, and we also, at the end of the day, save on the cost. So this gives the complete brief uh, of the events which took place in 2021. And uh, I, I would like to say that if there are any questions or anything, or the future roadmap is left, just I would like to highlight that we, we are now consolidating, consolidating the retail network and starting of fulfillment of orders in the UK, USA, and UE through our own fully, fully owned subsidiaries. Then we, as I said earlier, installation of additional multi-head embroidery machines to minimize dependence on third-party vendors. And lastly, the introduction of fragrance and cosmetics line is under development stage. The development was put on a slow burner for the simple reason that the economic downturn started from the second quarter of 2022 calendar year. And we, 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 we were really thinking uh, how the, the events turn out vis-a-vis -vis political agitation as well as economic meltdown worldwide and in Pakistan as well. So the development of fragrance is almost, let's say, halfway through. And uh, if we have to expedite, it can be completed within the next quarter. But we are also viewing the situation very critically, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the overall economic situation. 
the affordability of the consumers and the mushroom growth which has taken place in the fragrance market in pakistan and out of the, out of new uh, the mushroom growth which took place most of the brands have really failed and there are reasons for that so we are very critically evaluating those failures so that we, we do not fall into the same footsteps god forbid and we will finalize uh, the fragrance launch date subsequently after doing our due diligence properly and having everything in place which is required for launching perfume success so that's all i should uh, on my part regarding the uh, session and the proper briefing session is concerned and now over to you if your participants have any question we are here to answer them thank you thank you uh, so much mr sir and mrs ma for the detailed presentation and uh, i would request all the virtual participants to please uh, write the questions in the chat box and uh, i will read the questions uh, to the management directly uh, so i have received a couple of questions uh, so starting off with uh, the first question is from mr suhail and he's from mcb arifa b He's asking, please provide details about the court stay taken on SECP investigation. Okay, I will tell you, Aisha. This it is a cold matter, and an inspection under Section 231 was carried out in 2017, and uh, a notice was issued to us, and a draft inspection report was given, and then we replied to those observations of the inspection team. eventually a few show cause notices were issued those were relating to the findings that the director register were not maintained and some small deficiency which they highlighted so a fine of rupees 25000 rupees was imposed and that was paid and that ended the matter lately in 2021 again this similar show cause notice was issued on the points which were earlier taken up in the inspection report of 2020 2017 which we had already replied we also confronted them with those answers which we had already provided to them on the inspection report of 2017 yet they were insisting to provide them the answers of fresh we did comply with their requirement and after the hearing they again ordered an investigation in the company on the same matters which were part of the 2017 report and were replied by us and ccp was satisfied so we decided that a matter cannot be same matter cannot be educated again and again and hence we moved the court and the court was pleased to grant an ex parte stay order against us So this is the okay thank you for the clarification uh, the next question is from mr hasan raza is asking in terms of the revenue growth seen in fiscal year 22 how much was due to volume increase and how much was on a, on account of price increment i would like to say that price increase has not really been done in the year 2021 22 the financial year there may be a price increase of about 10 to 15% at best there is the, 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 the effectively it is the volume growth is more than 50% oh wow that's great uh, so uh, the next question is uh, that in the past 2 to 3 years we have seen rapid growth in revenues of the company uh, should we expect the growth momentum to continue since you have expanded your physical footprint and have gained further traction what sort of revenue growth should investors look at as i said earlier and projected as well that we we have been able to uh, we, we we should be touching about 3 billion let's say from 1.7 billion we move on to 3 billion or 2.7 billion that in itself would be a growth of about 50% or more so if we we still think that achieving a growth of 50% 
in the year financial year ending on 30th june 2023 is just possible and for that i would like to add that we have already achieved in the first quarter more than 500 million the second quarter should be more or less the same and as i have said many times this is a cyclical business the season starts from march till june it continues beyond june but for the financial year let's say from march to june in these four months we do what we have done in the remaining eight months so if we have to continue with a billion rupees by december assuming because march would be coming in the third quarter and we are able to do 750 million so the remaining three months from april to june which would include ramazan eid and bakrai we would be doing 1.25 billion so that would take us to 3 billion a billion by june to by december then 1.75 billion by march plus 1.25 billion in the last quarter that will take us to 3 billion but we must be uh, calculating things conservatively so even if we are able to achieve 2.7 billion that would be a growth of about inshallah and, and beyond that if you if you could see the projection which we have made in 2024 then we say that we will grow by 33 percent from 3 billion to 4 billion the next year we have projected 25 percent growth from 4 billion to 5 billion so i mean it, it is it is not just the growth which we are artificially projecting we, we, because we started with a lower base so once you hit the 5 billion mark then the growth cannot be 50 percent or 70 percent every year i mean we, we need to be prudent as as well as practical at the same time so we have projected the revenue growth very conservatively and we have all the resources mobilized to achieve the same okay um, so um, i also wanted to know that uh, you mentioned that cosmetics and fragrances are also going to be hitting this hitting the market soon so what is the timeline for that and uh, what do you see the revenue contribution of uh, cosmetics and fragrances particularly? Asha, as I said earlier, we, we, we put the fragrance thing on a slow burner for the reasons I mentioned earlier, the political uncertainties and the economic meltdown and the propensity to consume uh, for, for, for luxury items. So the perfume in, in this part of the world is a luxury item. So, so having said that, that's a, a, a total a separate volume which will be achieved once we launch the fragrance. Which we will be doing and which we have been doing so far. So, so when we start the fragrance, the, the projections would further uh, increase. The expected sales revenue would go up with the induction, introduction of uh, fragrance in the market. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, the revenue growth remained muted. What happened in those two years? Uh, please come again with the, with, the, with the year. Which year did you say? 2019 and 2020. Yeah, if, you, if you recall, uh, the COVID started in, in March 2020. So, so the the, the peak season, the peak season, as I said earlier, starts from March till June, and that was a lockdown period. And I mean, achieving the same sales was a nightmare. So, Alhamdulillah, we did that only through e-commerce. And I must say that it is universal that the, that the sales growth. So, a good ki baat hai, matlab log retain nahi kar pa rahe the, employees ko nahi rakh rahe the. Retention so rate, layoffs so rate, uh, suppliers the payments ni the, and even in those times we, we did not lay off even one employee. We paid all our vendors and they were really thankful. And they asked us how how, how have we paid them? We, we told them because of the e-commerce. The platform pura tayar tha, 
ब्रीफिंग सेशन हो रहा है ये जूम पे हो रहा है वी हैव वेरी फ्यू पीपल इन द ऑडिटोरियम बिकॉज वी मेड बोथ द अरेंजमेंट्स इफ पीपल वुड लाइक टू कम इन पर्सन दे आर मोस्ट वेलकम बट द मेजॉरिटी इज इज ऑनलाइन सो द वर्ल्ड हैज चेंज्ड बिहेविंग इन अ डिफरेंट मैनर सो द शॉपिंग experience was also changed they were everything was going online the e-commerce boom it was no cut no 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 cut at all no nothing everybody was paid and and uh, uh, every employees was paid and even if you paid a bonus during the ramadan alhamdulillah uh, uh, we, we must thank god that we were able to not only survive but sustain ourselves very well in that difficult period okay uh, so the next question is that how much does the shifli machine installation cost and how much of your production was coming from third party manufacturing previously the shifli machine the landed cost because it was done earlier in 20 late 2021 i mean then the euro was much less so it costed us about 72 million rupees if i am not wrong it costed us about 72 million rupees and uh, uh, the, the, the we can say about uh, one third of the production we are now we, we have shifted back to us so so let's say if we were getting 50% made outside and we were making 50% ourselves so now we are making 75% ourselves okay thank you uh, the next question is that in the projections you have shown steep growth in revenues hello. going forward hello can you hear me can you hear me yes i can hear you hello ah uh, hello can you hear me sir i can't i can't hear me sorry can you hear me now sir hello yes aisha can you yeah aisha yes yeah. i can yes can you hear i us? can hear you yes i can hear you now yeah so i was asking that the next question is that in the projection yeah, aapki awaaz um can you hear me now should i ask the question yes i can hear you now so the question is that in the projections uh you have shown steep growth in revenues going forward do you have capacity to support that kind of revenue growth and how much capex uh, do you think it would require to enable those capacity to support sales what did you say aisha how, how much capex is required uh to support the kind of revenue growth that you are estimating for the next years acha we uh, effectively eventually would be requiring let's say around uh, 120 million rupees if we have to just uh, stop the outsourcing and we are only producing in house so we need another 120 million capex at the prevailing rate of exchange so that's about let's say 222 rupees but uh, going down further when we actually do that it may increase the capex requirement but as of today if we invest 120 million more then we'll be out of this uh, outsourcing business so everything will be in house and there will be no dependence on any third party okay uh, thank and, you the and, next as far as you the, the intent of the question is that we, if we do that if we, if we do uh, Yes, Aisha. I can't hear you. Yeah. So. Can't hear you, Aisha. 
Uh, next, I was asking the next question that uh, what uh, you can you also uh, share the cost per outlet for the next year and what are the targets for the uh, physical outlets for the next two years? Yes, as, as I said earlier, the first outlet would be of uh, Dolmen Mall DHL Hall and that is about 3,800 square feet which we have finalized with them and uh, the, the, uh, the, the fit outs of the outlet plus uh, the inventory, the requirement of the, that particular store would entail about 60 million rupees minimum. If, if we focus and if we keep things that as prices of today, but if the prices of cotton goes up or of other imports, or there is a rampant devaluation once again from 222 rupees, if you land up with 275 rupees three months down the lane. So, I mean, that will increase the, the requirement. But about 60 million, I believe, would be required for fit out and filling up the store with inventory. Okay. And uh, the next question is that, uh, can you please share the sales mix of stitched and unstitched uh, collection? It's about 50-50%. Whereas we intend to be selling more unstitched in the year to come. That would in increase it to about two thirds and one third between unstitched and print. Okay, uh, the next question is from Mr. Anil Kumar from Alphala Investments. He's asking, do you see any decline in revenue due to economic slowdown? There are, there are reservations, we have reservations, but Alhamdulillah so far we have not been hit because we tend to cater to the, to the, to the let's say the upper class, the upper upper class, uh, whereas the other brands which are struggling and cutting costs to achieve their sales, the model is different. So if a lady who is paying, let's say 10 to 12,000 rupees for buying an outfit, outfit from us, won't mind, is, has not yet mind that we cannot charge 2,000 rupees more. So she is happily paying us 14,000 rupees instead of 12,000 rupees. And getting the design and the product which you like. So, but this does not mean that the demand would be inelastic. It is elastic, but to a lesser extent than what the competition is offering. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Mr. Suhail from MCB Aripabib is asking, can you please share the update about your progress on Amazon? Progress on Amazon. See, Amazon, has its own advantages and challenges at the same time. Uh, I, if I don't remember whether we, we have discussed this earlier or not, but initially we started following the model FB, FBM, which was fulfillment by merchant. And uh, the, the, the purpose of incorporating the wholly owned subsidiaries was to shift from FBM to FBA. That is fulfillment by Amazon. So we, we, we was uh, able to incorporate those two companies, one in the UK and one in the US, started the model of FBA, wherein the main difference is once a customer in the US orders and the method of fulfillment is FBM, the orders is fulfilled by the merchant from its warehouse, let's say we are in Pakistan. So the parcel used to be sent out from Pakistan to the customer, which used to take three days minimum, and at the same time would entail custom duty while the parcel is entering US. So when the Amazon delivery comes to the customer, the customer is asked to pay the custom duty which has been imposed at the custom stage while entering US. And this upsets the customer. Customer wants if he or she has placed an order of let's say $70. So when the parcel arrives, nothing is charged. But in our case, when we are following FBM, the custom duty is levied. The customer is asked to pay another 10, 20, 15 dollars by the delivery partner, which in our case was DHL, and that was 
causing a lot of, of, of irritation and resentment from the customer side. And at times the part that first of all, the inventory was out of stock from our side. It took 15, 20 days to receive back the parcel. Then the condition of the parcel mark and then they would charge us both ways. From Karachi to let's say Los Angeles, they have already charged us from Los Yes, uh, now we can hear you. Up mute, pair, sir. Yes. Up, up here? Can you hear me? Yes, it's fine now. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. 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 Alhamdulillah, that started well. So we, we hope that if we are able to continue fulfilling through Amazon, in the months to come, the performance would be much better. Okay. Uh, so moving on to the next question, uh, can you roughly uh, tell us the breakup of your revenues in terms of out-of-store sales and revenue from online cash on delivery e-commerce sales and yearly growth in both of the segments uh, i feel that the uh, 2021 financial year may achieve kiya tha, that was the highest we achieved in this because covid ka bahut usme role tha. and hence the revenues were let's say about 38 uh, percent online and 62 percent but i believe now they are in the range of between 26 to 28 percent online, and the remaining is brick and mortar stores. Okay. Um, so, uh, the next question is from Mr. Anil Kumar from Alphala Investments. He's asking, What will be the marketing and admin expense for fiscal year 23? I said, you can see the projections. Mujhe, I, mujhe, I don't matla, remember them by heart. Aap, agar main projections dekh sakta hon, ya phir aap dekh le, nikal le wo page. And uh, in 2023, the selling and distribution expense is around 400 million rupees. And admin is about 195 million. Okay. Uh, so the next question is on the margin outlook that given uh, you will now be doing your embroidery in-house and machines are going to be installed uh, and keeping in view of the yarn prices that they are under pressure, should that uh, augment your margin somewhat? Thank you. And as I said earlier, we, we are trying to, to pass on the price increase, but cannot be done every month or every quarter. But with the induction of new categories and new designs, we are pricing them, keeping in view the increase in the cost. Because one thing already stores hit and that has been tagged at 4,500 rupees. So we cannot increase the price of the same design. So now we have to pay, pay with the pricing which we have already introduced. Now the new products or the new categories which are hitting the stores are absorbing the price. The cost increase and hence increase in prices. Okay. Uh, so the next question is that when is the uh, tax credit expected to expire? The tax credit doesn't, uh, if, if, in which case, you are talking of the tech, image tech enjoys the 100% tax credit and that was for three years. So one year has passed, we have two more years to go. So by June 2024, we have the tax credit for the e-commerce business. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Yasin is asking that, what is the average price of your product in your sales mix? 
If you think of our average basket size is around seven to eight thousand rupees. But with 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 Uzma saying with inflation and increase in the prices, it may be between eight to ten thousand for the year which will end in June twenty twenty three. Okay. Um... So we just have last five minutes. So I'm just skimming through the questions. Uh, so Mr. Motasim Bajwa is asking, how are you going to finance new stores? Uh, if you could share light on that. Simple Aisha, internal cash generation. Okay. So I'm just going to take uh, one last question that uh, why the company is carrying 1.5 year worth of inventory what forces the company to carry such a huge inventory? I have asked you that in the growth phase, we are launching new categories all the time, with which we have already reflected in the, in the, in the presentation in the slides. So by, when you introduce a category, you need to carry substantial inventory for both the brick and mortar store as well as the online store. I will tell a peculiar nature for the online orders. A lady, she sees it on the Instagram, clicks the buy button now, wants to wear it tomorrow evening in the party. So the excitement is that she places an order and she gets the delivery the next day. And if you do not have that inventory with us, then we loses the order. If the company loses the order, the parcel is delivered after three days, the event is over. She refuses the parcel because the COD means cash on delivery. And she hasn't paid yet because 80% of the, of the online business is, is COD. The 20% is just the prepaid business which the customers pay through card. So, I mean, it's, it's a very, very, very critical uh, uh, thing that we deliver within 24 hours of the placement of order. So, we have made a special arrangement with the courier company that if we deliver them by one o'clock, they deliver the, uh, the, uh, the, the parcel the same day. So if you place order, let's say at nine or 10 p.m. yesterday, we will pick back and fulfill the order delivered to the courier company by 1 p.m. today, and they will ensure that it is delivered to you by five or 6 p.m. this evening. So that keeps the excitement of the customer of ordering, paying, receiving, wearing, getting accolades, and then again coming back to wish for buying more. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're running out of time. So I would like to conclude uh, today's session. And I would like to thank you once again for taking our time and conducting this session. And I would request you now to say the uh, closing remarks. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, it, you, you have almost covered everything. And when it was a little offline, I was saying that I was going to ask Aisha 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 to ask Aisha. So you were very, very intriguing questions were asked by you and your participants. There is a good, uh, good uh, number of participants attending today. Alhamdulillah, yes. a very good number of participants attending. And at the same time, the good, good, interest good interest in, in the, the company. questions were intriguing. And, but 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 we are always open to any questions which our shareholders or our investors have to ask. We, we are we are very much always there to answer them. And the the, the, the transparency is very much there. Uh, if you see the annual report, it it it, it 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 has disseminated. We try to disseminate as much information as possible. Obviously, uh, keeping within the parameters of uh, not touching the inside of trading element. So whatever I have said, the disclaimer is always there. So do not rely on what just I said, but the things which I have mentioned on the basis of facts and figures, yes, you can rely on that. But as far as the projection part is concerned, so let's not rely and put our bets on the projection. Let's put our bet on what the company has really achieved and what the facts and figures are there to invest, if at all. If somebody considers them, to be, uh, to be of, of, of benefit and most welcome. Otherwise, we, we would like to uh, have our disclaimer in place. Thank you very much, Aisha. Thank you. It was my pleasure. It was my pleasure, sir. 
And uh, with that, I would like to conclude today's session. Thank you uh, to the management and thank you to all the participants who have joined us today. Take care. Allah Hafiz.